Hi again, and welcome to Data Structures and Algorithms course. Today, you're going to learn another abstract data type, Q. Similar to stack, Q is a list-based collection of objects but operates in a first-in, first-out order of data items or FIFO. For this topic, you're going to learn the applications of Q, the different types of Q, and the C-sharp implementation of Q using array. Q is a structure commonly used when you have items or objects that don't have to be processed immediately or cannot be processed simultaneously. In real life, we are very familiar with it as we encounter Q in a daily basis. When we pay at the counter in a grocery store, or when we refill at a gas station, or when we buy cinema tickets, and so on. But why there is a need for a queue? I mean, why do we have to fall in line and wait for our turn? With an assumption of the longer the queue, the longer the waiting time is. All the real-life examples that I have mentioned seems to be counterproductive. It may look negative, but queue really is very important as it is used to properly manage the correct sequence of operations, that is, in a first-come, first-served basis. Obviously, if there is only one automated teller machine, with only one bank client to transact, there's no need for a queue. But if there are multiple clients to use one machine, there will be chaos if the concept of queue is not applied. The main reason why queue data structure becomes mandatory and very useful especially in computer systems is that it comes into play when a single resource is shared among multiple users operations, or processes, like printer spooling, CPU scheduling, disk scheduling, serial data transfer, and so on. The purpose of Q is to convert multiple processes into a sequential process. There are different types of Q implementation. There is a simple or linear Q, a circular Q, priority Q, and a double-ended Q. In this lesson, I'm going to focus my discussion on linear and circular Qs. A simple or linear queue can be implemented using an array data structure. But unlike with stack that has only one pointer called top to point to only one entry and exit point to our container, queue has two pointers named front and rear. Front points to the beginning of the queue and the rear points to the end of the queue. Initially, when the queue is empty, the front points to index 0 while rear points to index negative 1. To add an item to a queue, the operation is called NQ. This increments the rear pointer by 1, and every time you enqueue, the rear is incremented by 1, as long as the container, in this case array, is not yet full. To remove an item from the queue, the operation is called the queue. This removes and returns the item from the front of the queue. In this case, Joid is returned to the calling program. Notice that we don't have to actually delete the item. This is different from our array list wherein, if you recall, removing an item in the middle or at the beginning of the array causes all succeeding items to shift one spot to the left. And similarly, inserting an item in the middle or at the beginning of the array causes all succeeding elements to shift one spot to the right. This is more costly and has a time complexity of linear or ON. In Q, both of these operations, the NQ and the DQ, have a constant time complexity of big O of 1, which is faster, a similar time complexity to stack's push and pop operation. The main drawback of linear queue structure is its inefficient memory space management. If I DQ three items, the previously used spaces can no longer be used because both pointers only increment for either NQ and DQ operations. In this illustration, since the rear pointer already points to the end of the array, it will be considered full and NQ operation is no longer allowed, even though the container is still half empty. A solution to this limitation is to implement the concept of circular queue. Using the same array, circular queue looks at your linear array in a circular arrangement logically. It treats the start and the end of the array to be connected, thus forming a circle. This allows the rear pointer of the queue to loop back and reuse the previously used cells. So in circular queue, if I call NQ one more time and pass in a value of sky, this adds sky to our array at index 0. And if I'll enqueue another item, say blue, it will be stored at index 1. There are other operations similar to stock like pick, which returns the front item in the queue. In this case, it's cha. Count is the property that returns the number of items in a queue. In this example, we have 5. And lastly, the clear operation which removes all items from the queue by resetting the front pointer to index 0 and the rear pointer to index negative 1. 
In .NET, both the generic and non-generic QADT are readily available. Same as with stack and list, the non-generic queue is a weekly type and any object can be stored and manipulated using in queue, the queue, peak, and so on. And as you learned in the previous lessons, this has a downside. The extra process of checking, boxing, and unboxing of type as it requires explicit typecasting of the stored objects before use, making the non-generic queue a bit slower. And in this sample code, for us to get the integer stored in my queue, I need to create a condition first to check the current type if it is in 32, and if so, I can now call the dequeue method, and for me to store it to an integer variable, an explicit type cast is required. Otherwise, I'll display a message here saying not an integer. And if you check the output for this, it says not an integer. It's because the front item in my queue is a string joed. Remember that if you fail to provide this kind of checking first before typecasting, your code will break. So let me dequeue the first two items, which are string type, to get to the third. And the output says, now serving number 14. On the other hand, the generic queue is much faster as it requires your code to specify the type upon declaration, making sure that every item that you enqueue is of the same type, thereby reducing the overhead work of boxing and unboxing of type. To show you the dequeue, pick, and count method, I'll display now serving and then customers that the queue. And then the next customer is plus customers that pick. And finally, I'll display how many remaining customers on the list. And as you can see, it says now serving joed as it removes and returns the front item upon the queue. And when you call pick, it only returns and shows the front item, which is now Sam, because joed has been removed already. And using the count property, you can see that we still have three remaining customers in the queue, Sam, Jewel, and Chap. And with that, let us now implement our version of generic circular queue. I'll create a class and I'll call it circular queue, and then I'll split my view to show both classes. If you recall in our array list implementation, what we have created is an array of integers, but it is only limited to holding items of integer type. In our stack implementation, we use an array of objects to accommodate different data types. Now, to make our circular queue to hold data type based on what the calling program had specified, I'll use the symbol less than and greater than, and in between I'll place T to represent a generic type, but it could be any valid identifier. And then, this is the type that I'm going to use to represent the array and the item inside it. I'll also declare three important private fields count, front, and rear, all integer type. Inside the constructor, I'll set the array size to 6 and initialize count and front to 0, and rear to negative 1. When accessing count property, all it does is to return the private field count. This keeps track of how many items we have on queue. To add an item, I'll create an enqueue method that accepts one parameter item of type t, the type specified by the user, I'll create a condition if count is less than the array length, this checks if the queue is not yet full. Then, I'll increment the rear pointer and assign the item to be added on queue to our array. Then, increment the counter to keep track of the total number of items on queue. Otherwise, I'll throw an exception, queue is full. To implement the dequeue operation, again, the return type must be t, and I'll say, if count is greater than 0, which checks if the queue is not empty before removing the item. Same with pop in stack, I'll store first the item to be removed to a local variable, then increment the pointer by 1 to point to the next item. Then decrement the count by 1 before returning the actual item to the calling program. But if the queue is empty, I'll throw an exception saying queue is empty. To implement the pick operation, again, this is similar to the queue, so I'll copy and paste the code. The only difference is that pick doesn't delete the item in front of the queue. It only returns it, so I'll remove the front plus plus and the count minus minus. Now, I'll create another method here called print queue, but this is not part of the queue operations. I'll use this later to print all the items in our queue, so I'll declare a local variable counter and copy the value of the count field. I'll declare another local variable index and I'll assign the value of front pointer to it. 
the reason why I did this is because I don't want to use the actual count and front variables as I am going to alter the values of these two variables inside this method. Now, using the while loop, I'll iterate until the counter reaches zero. And I'm going to print every item inside the array is starting from the front item up to the last item. So I'll increment the index and decrement the counter. In our coding program, let us test our circular queue class by replacing this built-in queue with our circular queue. And then I'll replace this for each loop with a single method call print queue. I'll say customers that print queue. And same as before, it successfully enqueues for items and then dequeue the first item joed, pick at the next customer Sam, displays the total count of three and prints the remaining three items on queue. Great, but this has a problem. Let me enqueue two more items, cloud and shine. And as you can see, it successfully added two items, making the total remaining items to five. So technically, since my array size is six, I should be able to add one more item to it. But if I enqueue one more item, you'll see that it triggers an exception, queue is full. And it makes sense. What we are trying to access is index 6, wherein it should be index 0 to 5. But notice that even if we dequeue an item before enqueuing another one, it still throws an exception. The reason is that what we have implemented is just a linear queue. And when the rear pointer reaches the end of the array, you can no longer enqueue. Our code doesn't reuse the empty slot at the beginning of the array, even if the item has already been dequeued from it. As a solution to this, we can have a condition that checks if the rear reaches the end of the array and then reassigns 0 to it. But that is too much work. A simple solution would be to use a modulo operator. The question is, how? I'll change this rear plus plus and make it rear is equal to rear plus 1, which is the same. Now, using the modulo, I'll divide it by the array's length and get the remainder. So, think about this for a second. Suppose the current rear is pointing to 4, adding 1 makes it 5. And if we divide it by 6, which is the size of the array, the remainder will still be 5. It doesn't change. In fact, all numbers 0 to 5, as long as it is below 6, which is the current size of the array, it will not be affected by this computation of modulo. It will only take effect if the rear points to 6. And 6 divided by 6 has a remainder of 0. And that will be the new rear. And this is how you make a circular queue. So I'll use the same logic for my front pointer as well as in my index pointer inside the print queue method. Now, let's try running our code, and it works. I added three items at index 0, 1, and 2, then remove item at index 0, then add four more items at index 3, 4, 5, and loops back at index 0. Then, we remove another item at index 1 to display the now serving SAM. This makes the remaining customers down to 5. We can test it one more time and try adding another item after the pick operation. And now, blue was successfully added at index 1. You can try and play around with this in Q and the Q to properly understand on how the circular queue works. I hope you learned something of value in this lesson. And if you do, please click the like and subscribe button for more video lectures like this. And again, thanks for watching. And see you in the next lesson.